Let's bring in Newt Gingrich, uh, Fox News contributor, former Speaker of the House and the author of Shakedown. He's actually not too far from Vatican City. Uh, his wife, Calista, is the ambassador to the Holy See. Um, Mr. Speaker, it was an Easter unlike any of our lifetimes. A lot of us were hunkered down watching the TV, uh, listening to the Holy Father. Listening, We listened to uh, uh, Cardinal Dolan here in the New York City area. What did you do there in Rome? Well, Chris and I have participated all week uh, with the Vatican. It's been uh, remarkable, first of all, to, to see at one point the Pope uh, was walking up St. Peter's Square with nobody else around by himself. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, the great church itself, which holds probably 12 or 16,000 people, uh, had, I think, about 15 or 16 uh, at the uh, various masses. So it's been very sobering. It uh, fits what has happened in Italy, where we're beginning to get the first bits of good news. Uh, for nine days in a row, the number of people being hospitalized has gone down a little bit every day. So that's encouraging. Uh, they're not out of the woods yet. And frankly, it's been very severely locked down. Uh, in fact, they increased the police presence in the streets on uh, Saturday and Sunday to make sure people would stay home. They, they're, they're really trying to starve out the virus by eliminating its chance to leap from host to host. So if you look at the numbers there in Italy, you mentioned the hospitalizations, the deaths, uh, Italy is seeing the lowest deaths in three weeks. Yesterday, there were a total of 431 deaths over the past 24 hours. That's the lowest number, Newt, since March 19th. In America, we're looking to Italy to see the trends there because we're hoping it follows suit here. What's it like there? Yeah. Well, let me say, first of all, I think probably it'll happen. It'll be faster in the U.S. We have a much more robust health system. Uh, we have been very aggressive, more aggressive than the Italians were initially. Uh, but it's, but the Italians followed one, once they understood how bad it was. And remember, this started in part in Italy because there are about 100,000 Chinese who work in northern Italy. And they kept open the flights to Wuhan, three flights a week, uh, for several weeks after it was clear that there was an epidemic. Uh, the opposite of what President Trump did in closing off the flights to China. So they were literally allowing the disease to continue to come in the country. It got out of control in the northern Italy area, which is very important. It's the biggest industrial center in Italy. Uh, and as a result, they had to go to very tough draconian measures of basically locking the whole country down. Uh, you had, you have had uh, gas stations, pharmacies, grocery stores, and nothing else for the last five weeks. And they have uh, strongly urged people to stay home. You can get a 3,000 euro fine if you're in the street without a legitimate reason. And they've been enforcing it. They find, I think, eight or 9,000 people now in Rome. So they're taking it very seriously. And I think they're gradually starting to win. Uh, and we've played some role in that. I was very uh, proud of Costa, who worked hard to make sure that Franklin Grand Samaritan first uh, could be accepted. And they, they literally flew in an entire field hospital to one of the most deeply hit towns and had uh, 60 doctors and nurses in a 68-bed hospital, and they've been working up there for weeks now. And I think mm. that saved a lot of lives as a result. The United States has announced a significant aid package for Italy, uh, and that's, uh, I think, the right thing to do. You know, this is a relatively weak economy, which has now been shattered, uh, and it's going to take a good while for them to recover. No doubt about it. So you write a story, you write an editorial for foxnews.com, and you say, let's channel Teddy Roosevelt. In what respect? Well, I've, I've been watching uh, President Trump with his, his briefings and bringing in CEOs of companies and bringing in experts. And he reminds me a lot of Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt was this very aggressive entrepreneurial personality. Uh, he you know, created the Rough Riders to go fight in the Spanish-American War. He uh, was a great naturalist. He wrote uh, significant books on the naval war when he was in his 20s. He wrote what became the classic study of the Naval War of 1812. Um, he won the Nobel Peace Prize trying to uh, get peace between Russia and Japan in 1907. So this was a guy who created the Panama Canal. You know, he did all sorts of things. And there's a lot of parallel between the entrepreneurial style of Trump, which is part of what drives some of the news media and some of the academics crazy. Entrepreneurial personalities don't fit the political science model of the presidency. And uh, Theodore Roosevelt was probably uh, the other great example of that. And in Teddy's case, he became so popular 
that the teddy bear was named for Theodore Roosevelt for a small baby bear that he refused to shoot. And a, a Brooklyn toy manufacturer created a, a, a bear modeled on that baby bear, and it became Teddy's Bear and uh, has been popular you know, for over 100 years now. So there's, there's a lot we can learn. Part of it is do what works. Don't assume automatically that the so-called experts are right. Keep pushing. You saw the president do this with the anti-malaria drugs. You saw him do this with uh, refurbishing masks, where all of a sudden they went from zero being refurbished yep. to 120,000 a week by Bechtel. Uh, you've seen him break through and get companies to sign up contracts for production. Uh, so in a sense, you have this surging aggressive personality. The downside mm -hmm. is, you know, sometimes you okay. make a mistake. Uh, that, that, that's the nature, whether it was Theodore Roosevelt or Donald Trump, it's the nature yeah. of entrepreneurial personalities. But he's going to get back up off the floor and go back and try gotcha. the next thing. Well, it is a Newt, terrific op-ed. So Read and it stay, and stay at uh, foxnews.com. Thank you, Newt. Great. Thank you. All right. It is about a quarter before the top of the hour, and Janice Dean joins us right now after a rough